So I need to tell you that at 20 minutes past noon Eastern, Facebook bulls were enjoying a much needed reprieve from days of selling, but suddenly Reuters broke this New York Times headline. Quote, Facebook is preparing to announce it has identified a coordinated political influence campaign leading up to the midterm elections. Not but 20 minutes later, America's biggest social media company blew out the news. They announced they had uncovered and removed 32 pages consistent with what they called Russian propaganda sites that were attempting to influence voters on both sides ahead of the midterm elections. We got these details. Facebook first identified the activity two weeks ago. The account holders went to great lengths to obscure their identities. Facebook killed the pages, one of which, by the way, had more than 200,000 followers and notified government authorities. And then there is this. Here are the images, and it took me, I would have showed them to you at the very top of the show, but we literally got them right before the program. These are some of the images that Facebook turned down. This one was so-called the resistors page. It appears to be very anti-Trump. If Trump wants to beat Barack Obama's Twitter record for most liked tweets, it says, he only needs to tweet two words, I resign. The next one here we can show you, it is also from the same side. History, quote, has shown that fascism must be stopped before it becomes too late. Trump nightmare must end. And I just want to let you know that there was another one on the on the white supremacist side uh, from a so-called Unite the Right page. See this one? If you go back, this, of course, was uh, what was going on around the time of, um, well, they were. it was for an event that involved white supremacists that wanted to meet up in an organized protest that uh, was a year ago. And, and very important to point out here, folks, some of them had some very ugly language on them, dirty words, we could not put them up, but they appear to be from both sides. And Facebook says these pages mimic what the Russians did in 2016 during our election. And amazingly, the timing, the news broke just as Department of Homeland Security kicked off its National Cybersecurity Summit right here in New York City with Vice President Mike Pence about to speak at the event in less than an hour. Dear Bolton is the only uh, business news anchor at the DHS Cybersecurity Summit. Deirdre, I would imagine with these images we just got a hold of, the experts there are awfully interested in the breaking developments. Uh, Liz, they sure were. And in fact, when I was speaking with different people here, including Mark McLaughlin, who is the vice chairman of Palo Alto Networks, he told me that in a certain case, it's normal because Facebook with over 2 billion users is visible. These hackers know that there is access to more than 2 billion users. And his opinion is they are managing what they can. Here's what he told me. In terms of visibility, they're very large. There's other very large. So if something happens there, it's very visible because lots of consumers use this. You know, big topic of conversation. I think they're doing a lot to try to take care of the uh, the issues that are prevalent. Um, you know, it's the nature of social media to have uh, folks want to use it for um, purposes that are not meant designed to use that. And it seems they're paying a lot of attention to that right now. And I think the, doing more and more of that would be very helpful. Liz, this cybersecurity summit is very much a call to arms. So you heard that particular guest from Palo Alto Networks talking about social media, but there are numerous CEOs here from various industries. So banking, technology, infotech, energy, telecom, it's really wide ranging. You mentioned Vice President Pence, who is going to start speaking here momentarily. The FBI director is here, the head of cybersecurity for the NSA. And this idea is really to bring both sides together. So the government and private enterprise to fend off all kinds of cyber attacks. What's interesting is that when I spoke with Secretary Nielsen earlier, the DHS head, she said that she sees this summit and the creation of this National Risk Management Center as a kind of 911 for all things cyber. And when we heard from Secretary Perry, he is here as well, Energy Secretary, he was saying, listen, if it were not for the private sector, the government at various junctures may not even have known how far the Russians got into infiltrating certain levels of certain grids. So the point here, Liz, the big theme is cooperation. We need both sides, private enterprise and government working together.